What's good, y'all? It's your good sis, Erica Bang, back again with another Power Book 3 Raising Canaan video. And in this video, I'm talking about episode 106. Let's get into it. The episode opens up with Rock paying a visit to the apartment complex where she is setting up the next sash house and there's a little bit of issues with the housing inspector because this is public housing you know there's a lot of rules and regulations and restrictions on what can and cannot be done in these apartments and this housing authority person does not mix words about it but like many who are trying to come up on the south side he got a little bit of shade to him a little bit of side things going on and ultimately he invites or kind of like demands for rock to meet him later for them to actually work out whatever it is that she's trying to do so that he could get something and then she could get this in return sir we already knew once those words fell out your mouth that this wasn't going to end well but go off sir go off and then we pick up with Kanan and famous who are passing out flyers about the showcase for tonight you get to see how excited famous is which is really a change of position because he definitely gets a little bit of nerves once he actually gets on stage but i'm gonna talk more about the showcase in a minute let's go right to detective howard who approaches his doctor outside of the, the actual medical facility to see if he had a son if that would actually help him out and if his son would be a good match and then we learned that his son would be a half match but they could do a special procedure that would probably be a good way to combat what's going on with him and his leukemia it's not a hundred percent like saving grace but it's definitely better than him not getting bone marrow at all and right now he's in a position where he probably wouldn't get bone marrow at all because none of his family either reach back out or are a match so Kanan is kind of like his last hope and this is interesting like I knew we was going to get here we only have four episodes left so I know we're going to have to move a little bit quickly but I thought that we were going to see him process the paternity a little bit more before we went straight to him thinking about Kanan actually giving him the bone marrow and by the way of the, how the episode played out it's not really clear how he's going to go about trying to get this from Rock and Kanan but he will definitely need Rock's permission to allow Kanan to do it because Kanan is underage and that's of best case scenario Kanan even wants to do it because Kanan does not know he's his father Kanan does not mess with no cops like it's just so many hurdles that are placed in front of him so this is this is going to be yet another uphill battle for Detective Howard but low-key I don't know about y'all I'm kind of hoping that Kanan winds up giving him the bone marrow I'm hoping that Detective Howard hangs around a bit more now over at the prep for the showcase we see big money bag Lou having to kick out money for everything he's not only paying for studio time now paying engineers and uh, bankrolling all of the things that's happening in the studio but he is the one funding this actual showcase he gotta pay the lighting guy he gotta pay the equipment he gotta pay everybody because crown has getting real comfortable with saying oh you need money go ahead and hit up blue over there and thank god rock was able to like walk in and peep some of this and actually bring this to his attention because while i think it's great like lou is able to figure out his way into the music industry and way to get his footing in a very solid but elevated place because he does have this money and he is able to bring this to the table i don't want him to get trapped in the whole just bankrolling everything and not able to access or or show his musicality show what he can actually bring to the table show his producing like you ain't the big bank sir you need to be out here also making beats doing what you do aside from just bankrolling this because for me crowning it crown could be the start but crown is a little he he's a, he's a fiend in the making i'm gonna call a spade a spade crown is a fiend in the making he is not the great business partner that you need and at some point i'm gonna need to see lou do some of these things on its own now the big thing that rock and lou have an issue with at the start of this episode is the fact that lulu don't want anybody slinging dope at the showcase he don't want rock doing it he don't want unique doing it and this sets up clarity for everything that we saw in the trailer um but before i get to him going to take a visit over to the unique rock is irritated about this because lulu knows that they are fighting for territory right now that they don't have as much he knows that they just got hit with the stash house lulu knows that they need every single customer they can get they need every single chance to make a dollar that they can get because they're trying to expand but also maintain at the same time and it's and it's stretching the organization beyond its means now now his desire to not have no drugs, no BS, no drama, no violence or anything at the showcase 
forces him to go and visit Unique to try to set up some type of parlay or some type of peace treaty specifically for the showcase and tonight. And while Unique agrees to it, that backstabbing mother, ooh, he tells Lulu to his face, yeah, cool, but then sets up a plan behind his back. And it's like, well, what else can we expect? This is Unique. Now, I thought this was very interesting because we saw this part in the trailer when um, Lulu goes to see Unique and he's like, you might need a favor later. I thought that this was an additional part of Rock's plan, but this is Lulu on his own volition. So I think in the last four episodes of this season, we're going to see the Thomas siblings start to do things on their own without each other just of their own choosing doing and thoughts which is going to be interesting because i definitely think it's going to cause problems for each of them now lulu doing this going behind rock's back and trying to parlay with unique and stop him from selling drugs or sending anybody to sell drugs within his showcase wind up setting him up because unique puts one of his boys as well as scrap who has supposedly turned and gone into unique's organization on him to be to mark lulu for the kill so it wound up setting him up not only did he compromise what they have going on and he should have known about how unique was talking because but before unique agreed unique was like yo it's crazy like which one is real is us being civilians and talking real calm or whatever and here real or is us on that wild sh out here in the streets bang bang shoot shoot them up whatever whatever is that real or is none of it real you could already tell what time that unique was on but him actually going trying to parlay in this way and then actually taking unique's word set him up to have a mark put on his back where because unique sent people to kill him scrap being one and then his man being another and then that ultimately fools rock's plan because it's come out that this basically killing lulu becomes a test for scrap to see if he's actually loyal and of course he's not loyal to unique so he tries to be as incognito as possible but however way he does it unique's homie unique's man peeps that scrap is the one who tipped lulu off and now he got him messed up he got him all cut up or whatever in the at the end of the episode and i'm re-watching when i do this because i want to make sure that scrap is even dead because i'm not even sure i don't know if they like just tortured him or if they really did kill him and in all honesty this is a hell of a day for rock to lose her little inside man and all this dust to get kicked up by way around the showcase because we also see rock lose her connect dean is out he figured out about smurf and what rock did in reference to buying the date and time of Unique's re-up and then all the problems that that caused and a little bit more worse than a little bit he told her you are distrustful disloyal and I don't want to work with you be gone so in this episode I feel like we really do see Rock start to fall towards the bottom but like she's not hitting rock bottom at all she got to find a new connect she got to find more territory or more customers to be able to even keep up with the demand of the expansion that she's trying to do because we're moving into the projects we still have the bodega and meanwhile her brother seem preoccupied with everything else that's going on so i think that this is the first episode where i really register like wait yo i think rock is stressed i think rock is worried i think rock is like really concerned about where they're at and then on top of that she dismisses symphony so let me talk about that really quick because we definitely got to go back rock dismisses symphony with the quickness and it blew my mind how she was talking to this man because while yes he kept this from her he went behind her back and got Kanan out of the precinct because he wasn't in jail but he was just pulled up by detective Howard and he didn't say anything he was honoring Kanan's trust and built in like building a relationship with Kanan and like Rock is so much so on an island so much so like she do everything on her own and she can't even see how that was a decision that was done actually for her and in support of their relationship I don't know when I'm watching the scene I was hoping for Symphony to fight a little bit more but then I also understood how he could just walk away and like maybe he'll return for another day to like when she cooled down and get her mind right because I definitely feel like she was dead as wrong and how she dismissed him and that relationship with the quickness like that she still has so much that she can learn from him she still has so much that she can grow from in reference to being in his proximity so the fact that it, this is one and done thing it's just like girl you setting yourself up to be in this valley alone when you really do have help around you to get you out and i don't know what's going on with kanan and marvin 
but in the description for this video it talks about Kanan coming up with a plan and we get to see the little beginnings of that plan in reference to Kanan like wanting to set up a, a stop and serve at this gas station which could wind up actually panning out in this episode we don't actually see them implement anything in it but this could actually be a good addition to the organization so maybe Kanan is turning the corner and not being a dumbass kid that you know rock called him earlier in the episode because a lot of the things he's been doing has been given very much so mistakes very much so his uncle marvin back to rock and her problems one of the things that she does in the hopes of trying to plug the holes in the sinking ship is she reaches out to the bodega owner's wife and she knows that her cousin got connects and he could potentially be the link to them getting a new connect in the new drug source which she desperately needs now that dean has let her go so i definitely think that we're gonna see the bodega owner's wife come through in the clutch girl it's a matter of time just hang in there she gonna handle your husband you gonna own this bodega y'all all gonna have hella money it's gonna be great in this episode we also get to see nicole again which i actually wasn't sure we were gonna see nicole again but she comes to the south side because she just gotta get her some laverne and by the end of the episode i'm starting to wish that she didn't because when she hits that blunt from crown that's laced and cracked it's just giving me she's going to be a fiend she's going to come here not only to see laverne but she's going to start copping down here she's going to get hooked Nicole seems very impressionable and she seems like she could definitely have an addictive personality so this is just a setup for failure and not only is Juke still struggling with all the words and the hateful speech and stuff that the mom delivered to her when she got kicked out the house after they got caught but Juke is going to take it very very hard if Nicole gets turned out and on crack by coming to visit with her yeah that's not gonna be good and on a side note detective burt detective howard's partner is looking around trying to put a little case together trying to do some things on detective howard's day off which brings her to speak to jukebox and i don't know if she was trying to say that she's a lesbian too so that she understands jukebox but she was trying to meet her where she's at it's like girl she don't give a damn if you a lesbian an alien anything she ain't talking to you because you a cop sis but for the most part detective burke didn't really do nothing in this episode except for try to gather information and then pass the message along because rock uses her to tell her like make sure detective howard knows that he don't want to be between a woman and her son and that's period i did a video on the conversation that rock had with kanan about missing a dad and we get further context because that clip actually came from this episode they're getting ready for the showcase and kanan's trying to put on the tie be on his boys the men stuff but she don't know how to tie a tie and that's kind of what prompts this conversation around do you feel like you ever missed out not having a father around and then she talks about the few moments where she kind of wished there was a father figure around for him and this is where i really wish that rock would have taken what kanan said to heart in reference to like symphony was really just trying to look out for him and was trying to support him and how he liked symphony and he was literally like yo don't don't do anything because you and symphony are good she didn't listen to none of that she went in hot as hell when it came to symphony and it's like you did all this for Kanan to like him just to toss his ass to the wolves sis make it make sense but anyway back at the showcase y'all we get a lot of moments a lot of strong character beats initially jukebox is nervous and has to get talked out of the bathroom by Kanan they make up in this moment Nicole is able to meet famous and meet Kanan and then Kanan is able to put two and two together Kanan already knows Kanan knows jukebox's sexuality this is a nod to in the previous episode when it got into a fight and he's like I know your secrets and then he also says that he's going to be here for her and this episode no matter what we get to see famous all cocky and confident in the behind the scenes but drew gotta help him get into it on stage because then that's when his actual nerves appear uh, we get to see the attempted hit on lou but scrap you know clues him in on it and then lou starts this fight so that can create a distraction so that they can get out of there he don't have to worry about that like a lot of things definitely happen around or building up to this showcase it was very interesting to see for me just a little side note how jessica moved in this episode because i have been a little nervous about sis she's been moving a little bit shaky to me and giving up questionable vibes but in this episode where she doesn't take the blunt from crown when she doesn't take the advances from the brooklyn boys when she stands tall and she reaffirms lulu i'm like all right so maybe she really is this ride or die she was just you know being manipulative in the other episodes and really doing what she had to do to get famous in a position that she needed famous to be in before the episode ends rock makes sure to take care of the housing authority person 
he gets a little handsy, a little aggressive, and she got to knock his ass out. Then she calls Marvin to help handle it, and I'm still very perplexed as to why he put the man in the wall versus actually taking him up out of there, but I'm gonna just assume that he's saving him for later. He's going to get some people to help him carry the body up out of there or break the body down before he carries the body up out of there. But please don't leave him in the walls to stink and rock. Don't do that now. And I think that that scene was definitely needed because we needed to see Rock actually get her hands dirty. Um, up until now, we haven't seen her actually enact any violence or actually handle anybody. And it was good to see her be able to hold her own. In the moment of the showcase, y'all, I almost forgot about this, but Kanan is listening to Famous's lyrics and they're basically about what happened with Buck 20 and D Wiz and all that was going on. And he's taken completely out of it because he hears basically what happened as if Famous did it or knew when it really was Kanan's life. And then we get the voiceover from present day Kanan Stark who's saying like, that's what these rappers do. They rap about shit that they don't even know about things that they never experience and they make millions off of it and all that kind of stuff and I'm very interested to see what this looks like in the next episode for for Kanan the Famous like is he going to feel a way or resentment towards Famous for even immortalizing what's actually going on because part of it is also like I gotta listen to the song again because I didn't really catch all of the words y'all but part of it is like is you snitching in this damn song sir like let sleeping dogs lie we don't necessarily need to keep the conversation going about what actually happened with all of this and that has been something that also tracks like people will put stuff in some music and then next thing you know the cops have that as evidence against you so like what's actually going on but the way that Kanan was really just struck by the words that he was hearing and taken to a place that he just didn't want to be at it it told me that we're definitely going to have this conversation come up again and I don't know if it's going to be something that puts a rift between Kanan and Famous or not but it's going to be interesting to see what I don't understand is how Kanan feels a way about it but Jukebox is on the song and didn't say anything about any of the lyrics or any of the issues in reference to the lyrics so again I'm very interested to see how this all plays out ultimately this pushes Kanan to go to Davina's house for whatever reason like, at first I thought that he was like oh I'm gonna go tell Davina the truth before it all comes out right but he goes to her house he just talked about he just wanted to see her next thing you know they're getting it on like there's no conversations being had so not only did he not come clean to Davina about what's actually going on or even ask Davina about if she told about the stash house, he just getting right to the nitty gritty and it's like, yo, there's more things just building up, piling up, piling up, piling up. And this shit is definitely going to come to a head. Also at the showcase, which I do want to highlight, it's another little small spot. We get to see Marvin be proud of Jukebox. He's like, yo, that's my kid hollering from the crowd. And we get the beat in the beginning of he didn't even realize that Jukebox was performing in the showcase when he talked crap about it. But we get to see a little bit of a human sensitive side when he's watching Jukebox perform and he's so very proud, which just makes me even more intrigued about what is going on with them. Like, do Marvin really want to be a good daddy, but Juke just won't let him? Like, what has happened with y'all that, that y'all are really in this place because he has moments where it feels like he really does deeply care or he really does want to try and it's just like they just can't seem to get it together if you missed it i have already done a video about marvin versus jukebox where i talk a little bit about what i think has happened in their past and what has gotten them there so it'll be linked in the cards above description box down below be sure to check that video out but that is my full episode six breakdown for power book three raising canis season one y'all drop down in the comment section and let me know what you thought about it hit the subscribe button join the tribe because i'm posting new power book 3 raising canaan videos every day and we are on the countdown towards the end of the season we got four episodes left and i know it's going to be nothing but action and more drama as we go along and we gotta talk about it post in the comment section down below i will reply to your comments i cannot wait to chop it up with you be sure to hit the like button because you made it all the way to the end of this video and i know that you liked it and on screen right now is my full power book 3 raising canaan playlist if you missed any videos you can check them out by clicking that playlist or if you're looking for any of my other Power Universe coverage, you can check out one of these playlists here, Power Book 2 or Power Book 4. It's your girl, Erica Vane, and I'm going to see you in my next video. Bye.